as of right now, we're still early today. It's one, you know, for coming off the, the late start. We, we start later today when we get back um, late like that. So I have no updates on anything injury wise at this point. They're still working through the treatment process and all the other things they do post game. So normally I'd have something for you, but because of the schedule, I don't at the moment. So uh, that stuff will have to be held for a later date. Um, just so you guys know, just as the week schedule goes going into the bye week, uh, we brought everybody, the players will be in today. Uh, our coaches will be in a full work day tomorrow, and then we take the mandatory Thursday, Friday, Thursday through Sunday off. So our players will get tomorrow off. It works weird with the bye week or with the Monday night game um, because we bring them in late today, and then there's tomorrow technically would be their off day in a normal process. It's the most sore they are after a game, and so we're just going to cut them loose. They they need the recovery anyway, um, so they'll be off tomorrow and through Sunday. We'll be back Monday for normal practice week. So. That's how our schedule will work because of the oddity of playing on a Monday night game, going into a bye week. I've never had that happen before. Uh, so that feels a little bit weird, but uh, it's kind of nice to not have a short week. I didn't ask you about Coburn last night, but, mm -hmm. but did he leave, um, I guess, because he was physically couldn't come back, or is that yeah. more precautionary as well? No, he, he could not come back. Um, I, would, I would venture to guess at this point um, with the bye week, you know, it might be. Hopefully a limited amount of time after that, but but could certainly miss uh, a, a game or two at this point. I don't think it's long term, but I think it might be a, a short term absence. Something else from last night: the yeah. the fourth down spot where Will dives for mm -hmm. it's hurt. Did you think about challenging that role? You know, we didn't get a look at it um, until late, and then when I saw I saw it afterwards, I would have certainly challenged that spot. Um, spot challenges generally are really difficult. Um, you don't usually have a lot of luck with a spot challenge. Um, they tend to stick with whatever's called on the field. Um, occasionally one's very clear, but you saw a Mike challenge one last time on the other side that, you know, it was close. It was close. It was worth a challenge. They're probably going to take a timeout anyway, so they just challenged it. Um, those, those have to be like really, really clear usually to throw a challenge flag for those because they don't generally go in your favor. Um, but yes, I thought Will did have the first down. I thought the ball was extended in bounds over the line to gain. And, uh, but in the moment, I didn't have a replay. And I asked, I was asking upstairs if, if we see anything, if it's close, because I'm, you know, I'm 60 yards away from it. I couldn't see it. Um, and, and the replay would have shown it. It might, might have been a challenge we could have won. Did the quarterback change impact your decision to, to potentially go for it in that spot at all? Um, well, no, I mean, our, our, our book at that point was not, we were at a no go in that spot. Um, you know, Rob gets on and tells me before the start of every series, kind of where we're at at what the, what the down and distance markers would be. And, um, usually on second down, he's going to tell me, you know, punt in that situation. I got the punt call. Um, most of the time it might be like two or less we're going or one or less we're going, but in that particular case, uh, it was punt and, and the way our defense, uh, it's, you know, felt like that was going to be a possession field position game to start. And so uh, instead of giving them good field position, just try to punt and pin them back as best we could. So um, I, I'm tempted to go for a lot of fourth down sometimes and, and my, my better judgment takes over uh, from the upstairs people. But yeah, I would that particular one was it was a no go. It was a punt all the way. From last night's game, from what Mason did and the way he executed the game, you know, kind of efficiently. Yeah, I mean, we, you know, I think we didn't ask a lot of Mason in, in the second half of that game. I thought we were running the ball well, and we were going to keep doing that. Um, but it's to me, it's very similar to, um, you know, kind of how Chicago went. Like, had a good lead, and, and we're running the ball well, and and we just had a chance. Now, I, I also called it very conservatively in that regard. Um, because I was trying to make sure that uh, because our defense was was playing lights out and, and I was just going to keep running the football and we ran it well and we were running it well and it, it worked out for us but um, yeah Mason managed the game well he did a nice job of just making sure that we didn't have anything disastrous happen um, because at that point that's really all that was going to help them get back in that game and um, he did a nice job of making sure we were clean operationally and the ball was secured and uh, it was good it was a good boring way to finish the game and look I'm all for it um, but that that's a good thing there is lessons to be learned in that for sure picture Levis over Rudolph this season getting to know everything you can about Will finding out if he's your guy long term giving him a chance to, to develop and get over the youthful mistakes and all of that is that accurate yes view of how you guys are looking yeah, at that's it? exactly how we look at it and 
Um, I, I appreciate Mason's professionalism. Um, I pr- appreciate how prepared he was and ready to go into the game. But uh, Will is our starting quarterback. And I said it last night, and I'll reiterate it again, that when he's healthy, he's starting. And um, hopefully he's healthy for Indy and we're ready to roll and, he, and he's the starting quarterback because um, it's hard to play quarterback in the NFL, as everybody knows. Uh, there does take some development. Guys make young, young player mistakes. You, you see it all across the league right now. And he's we're going to find out everything about Will that we can. And he's going to continue to grow and get better and play better. Um, he needs to play better for us. Um, and at the end of the day, uh, I believe that he will. And that's where I, that's that's where I'm at with with that whole thing. There's no controversy. There's no second guessing. That's that's what's happening. So that's probably as clear clear as I can state it. Have you ever felt like that any instances where Will was maybe trying too hard not to make mistakes, and that's why he's made some of the mistakes he's made? Um, I don't think that's the case. Uh, there's it's more there's more times where he's trying to make a play when there's not a play to be made is what's in this early part of the season that's been his biggest issue but um, you know outside of those plays he's done a lot of really good things and I'm I'm excited about his growth but I don't sense that it's more not trying to do it I think it's been the the opposite uh, where he's been trying to make a play when there isn't one to be made um, and and forced himself into some errors but outside of that those couple of plays he's he's done a lot of good things for us so far. Uh, same, same as I really have with you guys. I just told him, look, he, he was, I mean, it was, it's a, he was hurt and, um, he was having trouble throwing. He had pain when he was throwing. Um, and so there was no reason to, to, to put him in the game. If, if it's a injury to your throwing shoulder, um, there was no, no doubt in my mind that that was the right thing to do for him. And, uh, especially with the buy and, and the style of game, I just, I felt like, instead of risking further injury uh, or, or further, um, you know, shots on his shoulder that I just, it was the right thing to do in the moment. I told him the exact same thing. And, and I told him what I just told you guys that as soon as you're back healthy, you're, you're back in and going. So there's no, he shouldn't feel any type of way about it. Um, and he was sore this morning and all those things. So it's, it's, it's your traditional injury of a quarterback and, and Mason went in and played well and, and will be back starting when he's ready to go. He is right. He's out. You guys break the thirty-point streak. You get your first win. How much do you have to put into making sure that he understands that he's the guy and he doesn't continue to press and do some of the mistakes that he did previously? Yeah, I, I think that's a human nature thing. You know, I mean, there's, but I, I mean, everything I've done with him from from the minute I've gotten here has been about trying to do everything we can to to build him up and to give him confidence and surround him with players and. Uh, give him every opportunity to succeed and uh, that's not going to stop and we're going to keep coaching and keep going and uh, how he handles it is how he handles it but he, everything for me has been transparent straightforward with him and um, I would imagine he feels pretty confident in that stuff I've, I've been truthful with him the entire process so uh, I don't have any I don't have any worry about it uh, how he's going to handle that but um, again it is a human nature thing and you know sometimes the outside world gets a little noisy you just got to block some of that out. There was no Jeff Simmons last night to draw double teams. How impressive did that make what Tavondre was able to do for you? Uh, yeah, he's he's playing better and better every week. Um, really impressive performance by him. Uh, dominant performance. That was a, a matchup uh, on their, their interior line versus our interior line that uh, we felt like was to our advantage, um, even with Jeff out. Um, and really, those guys stepped up around him, too. I thought Sebastian Joseph Day probably had his best day um, most impactful day he's had he's been a good solid player for us but he was he made some impact plays um, and then and then Lynch and, and uh, Anderson both played well as well I mean they did a nice job in, in their role so but sweat was a force and um, when you got a guy like that that can get pressure on the quarterback at his size uh, that can st- stop the run and make plays laterally along the line of scrimmage um, he was really disruptive in that game and again showed up in a matchup we felt really good about up front off on the offensive line, I guess, namely maybe Nicholas Petitfier on the right side. Did you see some improvement there from him? Yeah, there was improvement. Um, you know, I think we still got to get better all the way across the board. You know, that's a that's an ongoing improvement project for us. Uh, every game we go out there, we got to play better and better than the last one. And so I thought it was it was a better game uh, from all those guys. Uh, and we also didn't put them in a lot of drop back situations either. And that was by design. You know, we were trying to make sure that, that we could protect 
Um, and that's how you protect those guys and protect the quarterback. If you're not drop back protecting very well, and you got to find other ways to do it. Uh, and so we did that, but they did their part too, and I thought they played pretty well up front. Um, but yeah, we guys got to keep we got to keep getting better every week. Uh, there's no at no point will I ever tell you guys that that we've arrived up front. I mean, we got a lot. They got a lot of work to keep going and things to improve on. So uh, we'll just keep at it. Working being down injury related, or was that practice performance? No, it wasn't practice performance. It was he um, he really was pretty limited in our work day on Friday's practice. Um, so missed missed a, enough work that I didn't feel great about going into the game uh, with that being the case, especially the type of game we were going to play. Um, and so I didn't have a, I just didn't feel like that was, he was in the right place to, to be up and playing. And, um, and John took a lot of those reps um, in that practice. And so it just, it just felt like that was the right move for the week. I, I'm not going to sit here and tell you that's the, the move moving forward, but um, yeah, he was affected a bit by, by the, even though by Friday there was no, or by whatever day it was, the last day of the week, there was no injury designation for him, but he just, he had missed a significant uh, portion of practice for the week. Why so much more Burks than Hopkins? We rotate those guys. Um, there's a lot of things that Burks does um, that helps us in, in some of the run game and some of the blocking stuff. Um, but yeah, that that's the primary reason is to keep them. I mean, we rotate a lot. Our personnel is, are, are pretty well. Um, you know, Westbrook plays quite a bit. Burks plays quite a bit. Uh, we try to rotate those guys when we can. Uh, but that's. It's more for just the packaging of the plays uh, and to make sure those guys are staying fresh. And, and hops it, you know, we weren't throwing the ball a lot either. Um, but at 32 years old and, and being mindful of, of the length of the season to make sure that, you know, he feels good all the way through the entire end of it and that we have him for all the things we need him for, which is, you know, passing situations certainly and then third down and in the red zone. Those are, those are spots where he really helps us. Did you willing last night to tell them we're running? By, by having much more burps than Hopkins? Yeah, I mean, we really turned last night, second half, in like a team run drill. I mean, it was th – that. I didn't care about it at that point. I mean, certainly things we pay attention to um, as we move forward and through the bye week as we self-scout and do all those things. Those are tendencies that we'll be aware of. Is, is uh, D-Hop still on any kind of you know, pitch count? I think he's played over 30 snaps so far. No, and it's not an intentional pitch count. I mean, if we were in a – if we were throwing the ball a whole lot more, I'm sure he would have been involved a whole lot more in that process. But – I mean, we were in a bunch of heavy personnel at the end of the game. We were in some goal line and 13 personnel. So uh, just different style of, of game in the second half. Um, so, that I mean, no, it wasn't an intentional pitch count in that sense. That sequence at the end of the first half, how many times do you actually practice? I mean, I know you focus on it. But how many times do you actually practice something like that? And how well executed was it? Uh, a lot. Um, I was proud of it. Uh, that was that was fun to see those guys execute that. Yeah, that's a. In fact, Tyler even caught that <clears throat> caught that same play, that same ball uh, in Miami a couple years back, 2019 probably. Same exact play, same exact operation. Um, it's a play that that we walk through at least walk through once a week. Uh, we talk about the operation quite a bit. Uh, we've repped that full speed, you know, in training camp probably three or four times full speed, which is a lot for a situational call, you know. Um, and the other part that was a bonus is it's the same coverage structure and same defensive call that we see from our defense. And so we've gotten reps on the exact call um, that we were going to see in that particular situation. Um, and they did a great job. I mean, they <clears throat> they three-man rushed us. It gives you time. Tyler's running a 25-yard deep, deep in route, and he gets behind both the robbers that are sitting in the middle of the field. They bite down. Uh, Mason delivers a nice ball, and, and we do a phenomenal job executing the clock. And in the huddle, we call it. They're all aware of the situation. We're in a, it's 16 seconds. That's about as tight. That's about as tight as I've ever seen it done. We did it once when I was in, in um, Detroit. We hit the same play against Minnesota at the end of the game to tie it uh, with the same 16 seconds left, same same throw, same catch, and a clock with one second left to kick a field goal. Um, so it's it's a sort of a proven play in that spot, but great communication in a huddle of a down-down clock situation, and, and Tyler knows it well and catches it, executes it, and everybody gets set, and uh, we clock it. It's a huge operation and a, and a point swing. I mean, you can operate in those margins and give yourself a chance. Did last night's game plan running the ball like that, did that cater to what your offensive line is right now a little bit better? Certainly. I think we're a much better run-blocking unit overall. Um, we do a really good job moving the line of scrimmage. I think you, if you watch JC and in his power, him and Pete um, did some really nice things. I thought Dylan did some nice stuff. Um, just pulling on the perimeter, our receivers blocked well for us too, which was helpful. Um, 
<clears throat> but yeah, that's that's more of our strength currently through four weeks um, than the pass protection part is. Now we're still going to have to be able to drop back and pass protect and, and we'll help where we can. But yeah, uh, we've, we've done a nice job, I think, in the run game and moving the line of scrimmage and being productive. For Jarvis last night, how did you feel he performed and uh, what's the confidence level in him being a starter for you as long as Cheeto's not in there? Hi, uh, I thought he he showed well for himself. That was a really good game by Jarvis. Um, played scrappy, played confident, played physical. Uh, for for a rookie to come in and do that uh, against those players, that's a, that's a I mean Waddle and, and Tyreek are really good players, and um, that's a tough assignment to be out there on those guys. And I thought he answered answered the bell, uh, and it was cool for him to go do it at home. You know, he's from down there, and uh, there's a little bit extra motivation for that. A lot of people watching him uh, from his hometown, but. Yeah, I, I was impressed with Jarvis. Uh, I thought he really re rebounded from from what was a kind of a shaky off the bench performance against Green Bay, and and really locked in and played well for us. And to have again have four corners that you can count on to come play uh, now that with Cheeto out and Jarvis being that fourth guy in there um, to be able to come play at the level he did last night was really encouraging. What do you tell the guys as they get out of here for the rest of the week, just relative to this is something to build on and the season starts now kind mm -hmm. of thing. Uh, say the first part one more time. What do you tell the guys as they get out of here? Just is, is this being something relative to build on? And, and yeah, I, I think I feel the same as I did last night. Um, there's confidence that comes with winning. Um, it validates what you do and how you do it. Um, it helps guys believe that what we're doing is the right things, and that's that's great. Um, the other part of the message is, is you know, we're still one and three. Uh, we got a hole to climb out of, uh, and, and we're going to play some good football teams coming up. And start off with a divisional game right off the bat out of the bye that's an important one and uh if you want any chance to make the playoffs you got any chance to be a competitive team you got to win your divisional games as many of them as you can and this is a really important one after the bye so um our guys know that it's it's one win um just like we've had three losses it's just one win uh, our my approach to the day doesn't change um, there's still plenty of things we got to correct and get better at um it's it's a lot easier when you win to do those things, but that process doesn't change, and and we have to keep correcting and keep getting better and keep improving because, um, you know, I think well, I think we like winning, and uh, we're gonna need to win some more games here, and uh, we haven't arrived by any stretch. So we won one game, it's great, it's good to, it's good to have it, but um, there's a lot of work to be done still, and a lot of football left to play. What are you chance about how long you get a chance to go back and look at the play where they initially gave you guys the possession on the punt that was simultaneously possessed and what what did you see on it and also was that punt partially blocked uh i think calais got a fingertip on it uh it looked like it it didn't necessarily fully affect the ball i mean the ball still went downfield enough but i think he got a piece of it um i i, I just told the officials on the sideline <coughs> in the moment that uh I said that that's got to stay with the call in the field, right? I mean, that was a, that was simultaneous. They ruled it as a fumble, and that should have been the ruling, I thought. Um, and it went to New York, and, and they obviously disagreed and thought there was enough visual evidence to overturn the call. Um, I just I thought at that point it was probably inconclusive at best, um, but they made the ruling they did, and that's what happened. But yeah, I think it was very very close. Um, and again, it's going to be up to them to determine what that ruling is. But I thought it was a very close call to make. Good. What'd you say about how how much the coaches will be in, and what's the major focus for you guys without the players? Yeah, we'll be. I mean, we'll be in all day tomorrow. Um, our coaches need a need a little bit of a breather too. Take a break, uh, take advantage of the time off because you only get it once during the season, and, and we have no Thursday night games, so we don't catch any uh, extra days anywhere. So we'll take the take the break and take the time when they give it. Uh, we will be in tomorrow working all day. It's more self. It's all self scout centered. So. All the guys have their areas that they're responsible for. Uh, they'll self-scout those recommendations on what we've done well, what we can do better, uh, what should we do moving forward. I think we got a pretty good idea now, a month in, of, of what our team is. Um, and I feel pretty confident about that. And we got to find ways to, to play within those things that are our strengths and you know, hide weaknesses and, and supplement those weaknesses where we can. So that'll be the focus of the next couple of days and, uh, or, and over the weekend, then you got to get a head start on Indy as well. So when we come back Monday, we're starting. So we'll get a jump on Indy uh, over the weekend. In general, in general terms, what, what are you? What's that? What are we? I think we're a really physical defense. Um, I think we're aggressive and we fly around. We make life hard uh, on opposing offenses. I think we're a good rushing football team. Um, I think we're a physical front uh, when it comes to running the ball. I think we're really uh, we when we play complementary football, and we don't turn a ball over. Um, we're going to be competitive as any team in football. Uh, we got to protect the ball better than we have, 
And, um, you know, I think we're a good play action team right now and a good screen team. And so those things are, are things that I'm confident in. And, and we got to keep improving our drop back game, uh, both in the protection portion um, and the uh, overall success of it. It hasn't been good enough yet. Um, so we got to keep that part rolling and keep working on that. Um, but I'm, I'm, I'm happy with what we've shown so far. I think we're we're better than one and three, but you know we're one and three at this point because of because of some mistakes we made, and we got to keep uh, limiting those and, and letting our defense go play and, and complimenting them on offense. What's Chris status, and, and why did he miss? The um, that's personal. He's been in and out. Um, had to go take care of some things that uh, uh, he needs to take care of, and, and when he's back, he, he's back, and, and we're working. So, um, not much to say about that. Uh, not right now. How big, how big has Diggs been for you back there doing everything that he does? Fantastic. Um, again, I, I was with I was with Diggs in Detroit for two years. I saw the player and competitor uh, in person that he is, and um, he's still got it, man. He can still play, and he's done a really, really nice job. Uh, him and Hook are starting to develop some chemistry and communication. They're starting to play really well together in the back end. Um, that's super encouraging. Uh, but he just he flies around. He loves playing football. He's a really smart football player, and um, he's been a really big addition for us at that safety spot um, to be able to compliment Hook. Uh, and it's it's been fun to watch those guys start to grow a little bit, and uh, they're making plays. If you look at the self scouting and punt protection, are, yeah. are you going to have to look at? I mean, this is almost the third one you get blocked. Yeah, no doubt. You got to look at scheme, or you got to look at player execution. Uh, I think you got to look at all of it. I mean, I've not been around that punts getting this close to that often. Um, and again, it's, they're all for different reasons. Uh, but yeah, I mean, whatever it is has to stop. Um, we can't have those. Uh, it could be scheme. It could be personnel moving around. I mean, we've already done some of that. Um, but yeah, there's, there's, uh, we can't, we can't win games getting punts blocked. So um, we have to do a, a much better job all the way around, and uh, we've got to find some answers there to, to settle that thing down. What are the advantages of not carrying that practice squad quarterback this year? And does Will and Will's injury kind of make you reexamine? Yeah, that's something that that we can look at, um, and we will over the you know we'll just kind of see what the final verdict is there, and just to have have that. But the benefit is is that Mason gets all the reps on the scout team, um, and that's his practice, you know, because Will takes all the starter reps and, and, and the normal co flow of practice. Um, it's also allowed us to have some you know another player on the practice squad that can help us. Um, and so far, we've had to you know we've we've elevated our we've max elevated every week from the practice squad to two or two spots. Um, so that's allowed us to kind of collect another player or two that we think could could help us in those particular areas. But um, you know, we, we've we brought quarterbacks in to work out, and we just I, I'm just not in the in the I've never believed just to have one for having one's sake. If you feel like you got one that you're developing and and you think can help you and play a role, then that's good. Um, but if you're just doing it because you just need to have a third quarterback, doesn't really make sense to me personally. It's not. It's maybe not everybody's viewpoint, but um, that's sort of how I feel about it. If the guy's worth the time and the effort and energy to have around and develop, then uh, great. And if if we don't find one like that, then let's not sign one. Any idea if you guys be able to uh, activate uh, the window, I guess, for Cedric next week, or is it still too early? Yeah, we'll get to we'll, we'll evaluate that this week and then see if we're going to open the window next uh, when we get back to practice for Indy. Um, that's a that was a discussion that's sort of been on the horizon here as he's finishing his time on the IR and approaching the potential return to play. So um, the good thing is you get you get three weeks to, to bring them back and see where they're at and get back in shape and see them play football a bit before you have to activate them. And um, those discussions will, will happen this week.